Hello students. In this video, I'll be discussing about the normal derivative. The directional derivative of phi at p along vector a is given by grad phi at p dot a cap now by definition of dot product of two vectors grad phi dot a cap this will be magnitude of grad phi into magnitude of a cap cos theta a cap being a unit vector the magnitude will be 1 so this reduces to grad phi cos theta now you want the maximum value of the directional derivative for that maximum value of grad phi dot a cap this will be the maximum of mod grad phi cos theta the maximum value of cos theta equal to 1 when theta equal to 0 therefore maximum directional derivative of phi at p will be magnitude of grad phi at p the direction of maximum directional derivative is grad phi at p that is because theta equal to 0 this implies vector a will be parallel to grad phi let us take this example find the directional maximum directional derivative of f at minus 1 to 1 and the direction of this maximum so to begin with directional derivative is grad phi dot a cap so maximum directional derivative is magnitude of grad phi direction of maximum directional derivative this is grad phi now we have f equal to x squared y plus y z squared minus x z cube so grad f is equal to dou f by dou x i cap plus dou f by dou y j cap plus dou f by dou z k cap this will be now dou f by dou x is 2xy minus z cube into i cap plus dou f by dou y is x squared 
plus z squared j cap plus dou f by dou z that will be 2yz minus 3xz squared k cap so we need grad f at minus 1 to 1 so we substitute x equal to minus 1 y equal to 2 z equal to 1 so we get minus 4 minus 1 i cap plus 1 plus 1 j cap plus 4 minus this will become plus 3 because x is minus 1 into k cap so this is minus 5i plus 2j plus 7k so maximum directional derivative is magnitude of grad f that is square root of minus 5 squared plus 2 squared plus 7 squared which simplifies to square root of Nine plus four, fifty three plus twenty five, that is seventy eight. So, direction of maximum directional derivative is minus 5i plus 2j plus 7k we consider the second example here now the temperature of point in space is given by x squared plus y squared minus z a housefly located at 112 desires to fly in a direction that will get it warm as soon as possible. In what direction should it move? Now to answer this question, we look at the definition of a normal derivative or maximum directional derivative. Now the maximum directional derivative gives us the maximum rate of change and the direction in which the, max, the, the, the rate of change is happening. That is, the direction in which the rate of change is maximum. Therefore, the answer to this question is, now, maximum rate of change of temperature is magnitude of grad t only then if only if the fly moves in a direction in which the rate of change of mac is maximum can it get warm at a faster rate therefore the fly has to move along the direction in which maximum rate of change is occurring This is the normal direction from the point 112. So we have 
t of x y z equal to x squared plus y squared minus z so gradient of t is dou t by dou x i cap plus dou t by dou y j cap plus dou t by dou z k cap so this will be 2x i cap plus 2y j cap minus dou t by dou z will be minus 1 so we get minus k cap so dou t gradient t at 1 1 2 this will be 2i plus 2j since there is no z we keep the third term as it is so the fly the fly has to move in the direction of 2i plus 2j minus k from 1 1 2 2 so that it gets warm as soon as possible we consider another example we need to find the constants a b and c such that the function f at the point 1 2 minus 1 has a maximum magnitude of 64 units in a direction parallel to the z axis again this is a problem on the normal derivatives so to answer this the first step would be to find gradient of f at 1 2 minus 1 and the other information that we have is maximum directional derivative that is magnitude of grad f this is equal to 64 units the second information that we have from the question is direction of maximum directional derivative this is it is said that the direction is parallel to z axis that means we should have 0 i plus 0 j plus some constant times k cap now this constant now since magnitude of grad f if we write this again that is grad f should be equal to lambda times k cap since mod grad f is 64 we find that lambda equal to 64 therefore we can straight away write that grad f at 1 2 minus 1 equal to 64 k cap now we proceed to find the left hand side of this equation which we call it as equation 1 now f is given as ax y squared plus b y z plus c z cube x cube so grad f is equal to dou f by dou x i cap
plus dou f by dou y j cap plus dou f by dou z k cap that is a y squared plus 3 c z cube x squared into i cap plus dou f by dou y will be 2axy plus bz j cap plus dou f by dou z will be by plus 3c z squared x cube k cap. Now we proceed to substitute x equal to 1, y equal to 2, z equal to minus 1 in this. So we get 4 y equal to 2, so 4a, z equal to minus 1, so we get a minus 3c i cap plus x is 1, y is 2, so we get 4a minus b since z is minus 1 plus 2b plus z is minus 1 because of z squared we get a plus 3c k cap. Now we make use of equation 1. So this we will call it as equation 2. Now comparing 1 with 2 we get now two vectors can be equal only if the components are equal. Therefore we have now from equation 2 4a minus 3c this should be equal to in equation 1 i component is 0 so this will be 0 from equation 2 we have 4a minus b the j component in equation is 0 and the k component in equation 2 is 2b plus 3c comparing this with equation 1 we get 64 so we have three equations and three unknowns since the first and second equation are zeros we can substitute one in the other to eliminate a now 4a equal to 3c so we can substitute this in the second equation so we get 3c minus b equal to 0 or rearranging we get minus b plus 3c equal to 0 so we can solve we need to solve for b and c using these two equations so we have 2b plus 3c equal to 0 3c this is 64 if we multiply this with 2 we get minus 2b plus 6c equal to 0 adding the 2 we get 9c equal to 64 or c equal to 64 by 9 now b is equal to 3 times c this implies that is 3 times 64 by 9 that will be 64 by 3 and finally we have 4a equal to b that is 
64 by 3. This implies A is 1 by 4 times 64 by 3 which is 16 by 3. So if the value of A is 16 by 3, B is 64 by 3 and C is 64 by 9 then the function f will have the maximum directional derivative to be 64 and the direction of maximum directional derivative will be the z-axis.